hello, my beautiful chickens. It's time for us to use that distance formula that asks us to find the distance between two coordinate points. And I'm gonna show you two pretty hard math problems. Both of them have a distance formula as a part of its solution, but you will not be able to find the solution to the problem exclusively using the distance formula. So it's just a little step. But I want to challenge you. I want you all to get your 800s on the math section. Both uh, problems are um, allowing you to use a calculator, but I don't think you'll need it as much because it's more about thinking and um, assessing the position rather than um, using a calculator. But feel free to do that. In the first problem, I'm going to pause and you have seen this problem when you were watching the explainer videos for these two rules. And now it's actually time for you to find the measure of the angle B, A, C. Do it by yourselves and then come back to me. So what did you guys think? Were you able to figure out the measure of the angle in degrees? At least, or maybe if you just looked at it and you said, well, obviously it's B. And how did you get that? Let's talk about this. Whenever I see a triangle or a rectangle or, or a circle inside of a coordinate plane, my brain is immediately thinking special triangles, quadratic triples, distance formula, midpoint formula. Um, here, other than the midpoint formula, we're going to be using everything. We're going to be using special triangles. We're going to be using the distance formula. What is the length of AB? Seven. What is the length of BC? Also seven. How did I know that? Using the distance formula or also seeing that the X coordinates are the same, negative two and negative two. So the only thing I needed to do was add four and three, the absolute value, because this length is seven. Then the Y coordinates for BC are the same. So that means I only had to consider the X coordinates. And here we're adding two and five, which is also seven. Or you could have just like used uh, the classical distance formula. This is also fine. Now, if a triangle has two sides that are the same, it is either an isosceles triangle or an equilateral. If you do the, if you use the distance formula, you can calculate the distance here. You will see that it's not seven, so it's not an equilateral triangle, it's an isosceles. We could also see that this is a 90 degree angle. How do we know that? Well, because we it, it, it is formed at an intersection of two perpendicular lines. Line AB is perpendicular to line BC. Therefore, this angle is 90 degrees. What can we infer about a triangle that is isosceles, which means that the two adjacent angles are going to be the same, and this angle is 90 degrees. These angles are 45 degrees each. What do we know about 45, 45, 90 triangles? You have it at the beginning of your math packet, but I need you to import it into your memory because you're not going to think about this trick if you are not um, familiar with the rule. X, X, X rod 2, 45, 45. This is your special triangle. So if you were, if you were supposed to, let's say, find the length of, of this AC, you could have said that this is 7 rod 2, but it's not what they're asking you to do. Here, they're asking you to find the measure of BAC in radians. You already found it in degrees. That's 45 and 45 when we convert it from degrees to radians. And for some of you, maybe that's super easy, but for those of you for who converting from radi for degrees to radians is challenging, let me show you how that's done. So you say 45, that's in degrees. Then you need to multiply it by something and I'm going to explain what that something is. We're going to do the fridge again. <laughs> and then we're going to need to get radians. Well, 
if you've seen my distance formula, uh, whatever is on the top of the fraction is going to be the unit of the desired outcome. And whatever is on the bottom of the fraction is going to be the unit of this. So on the bottom, you're going to have degrees. On the top, you're going to have radians. Okay, well, what is inside of that uh, fridge? Inside of that fridge, you're going to have something that equals to 1. Pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. So whenever you want to convert between degrees to radians, you can just multiply the degrees by pi radians over 180 degrees. Therefore, canceling out degrees, I always make that sh sh sound, and getting radians. So 45 degrees times pi over 180, pi radians over 180 degrees, what you end up having is you end up having 45 times pi divided by 180. So I'm going to divide 45 by 180. That's one fourth. One fourth times pi radians. We usually don't say the word radians, we just say one fourth pi, and then we can rewrite this as pi over four. Hope this helped you guys. And then if you are converting from a radians to degrees, you do the same thing. You multiply by the fringe that has to equal to one. And then instead you're going to do 180 degrees over pi. And then as a result, you're gonna have what's in the numerator and you can have, let's say pi over four in the denominator. And this is how you can convert it. Um, if this is too confusing, don't worry about it. There are There's plenty of information on how to convert between radians and degrees. One more problem. I'm going to pause the video. This one's hard. What did you guys think? Did you give it a stab? Pause me and then come back to it. Remember, when we're looking at a circle or a triangle or a rectangle inside of the coordinate plane, you're thinking about distance formula, special triangles, quadratic triples, and midpoint formula. One of them or three of them or all four of them sometimes are going to be helpful. We are asked to calculate HK. The best way I know how to do that is to draw a triangle. What's interesting about this triangle is that it will absolutely be an isosceles triangle. How do I know that? Because each side is a radius and each side is going to equal to 10. Using my distance formula, I can also calculate this length and I know for sure that this length is 16. And this is 10, 10, 16. I still have no idea what my HK coordinate is, but I'm closer. What can I do now? I can maybe calculate the height of this triangle. How can I do that? Well, a height will create a 90 degree angle and it would split the base into two. So this side would be eight. This side is still 10. Now we're curious about this side. Do you guys remember your quadratic triples? Three, four, five. And then we have an older sister that is double two, three, four, five. That one is six, eight, ten. And this one is a classical example. This is a 90 degree triangle where one side is eight, another one is ten, and this side has to be six. So now we know that the coordinate k went from 0 up 6, so coordinate k is 6. If we were asked to find coordinate h, for example, we would have um, added 8 to 4, and coordinate h would have been 12. And you don't really need to use the circle, tri uh, the circle equation here. All you needed to do was your triples uh, and your distance formula to find the right answer. I hope this video helped you guys, and we will be talking about other math 
concepts in the future videos. I love you all. Please leave a comment below this video if you'd like to be entered into a drawer, draw, <laughs> where we choose one lucky winner. Actually, today is, November, is December 1st, December 1st. So we're going to be um, choosing one lucky person today. I hope to see you all in person on Zoom one day and 